of God remains a priest continually. Adam was a created being from the dust of the earth, and we are dust too. But Jesus was born by the Spirit of God. Mr. Didat, dear friends, in his book, What is His Name, takes great pains to prove that one great characteristic of a true God is he who does not eat at Natu. Well, who are you? And who are our primitive tribesmen to tell God what he can or cannot do, say or be? Here in Genesis 18, we are told of three heavenly visitors, the leader addressed by Abraham as Lord, and he stood by them as they ate. Jesus, centuries later, the same friend and Lord of Abraham, ate with his disciples before and after the resurrection because he chose to do so because he is God. Maybe your problem, my dear sir, is although you emphatically announce 40 times a day, God is greater, Allahu Akbar, he is not big enough to perform these smashing, fantastic miracles. How long? I say, how long are you going to keep God distant from us, disinterested in us, dictatorial toward us, we who are made in his own image? The men appeared to Abraham, but two left toward Sodom, and one man stayed addressed as the Lord. May I sincerely, systematically, and strongly present you with some of the basic characteristics of God, and let you discover for yourself that in all of these, Jesus does clearly reveal himself to be indeed what we expect God to be. God is omnipresent, present everywhere. In the past, Jesus existed. And now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself with the glory which I had with you before the world was. John 17, 5. Well, and majidni anta ayyuhal ab. عند ذاتك بالمجد الذي كان لي عندك قبل كون العالم. Let Mr. Didat try to explain that away and therefore contradict himself and his own words in Birmingham in July when he told the audience, I believe every word of Jesus that is written in the Gospels. Again, in John's Gospel 8, 56 to 58, we read, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then the Jews said to him, You're not yet 50 years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, Before Abraham was, I am. Why I am? If you read Exodus chapter 3, verse 13 following, You'll understand why? Then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they say to me, What's his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said to him, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. What other prophecy of Micah 5 2, which tells of Bethlehem as the birthplace of the born king, the Messiah, then concludes, whose going forth have been from of old, from the days of eternity. Is this a description of a mere man, or indeed of God who condescended to be a man? I quote from John's Gospel 17:24 concerning his existence when the world began. For you loved me before the foundation of the world. Let's take note. Now the most familiar passage in John 1, 1 to 3. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh. Now in the future, I'd like to say to you, to confirm this truth, listen to the wisdom of Solomon in Proverbs 30 verse 4, listen. Who has ascended to heaven or descended? Who has gathered the wind in his fist? 
who has bound the waters in a garment, who has established all the ends of the earth. What is his name and what is his son's name? If you know, where is the answer or what is the answer? Jesus, our Lord, 10 centuries later, gave us the answer in John 3, 13. No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man, who is in heaven. The Bible states that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, forever, a title reserved only to God. In the last book of the Bible, we are mystified at the revelation in 118. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Verse 17 and 18, the same chapter. And when I saw him, John says, I fell at his feet as dead, but he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and of death. Do these incredible pronouncements, prophecies, and proclamations sound like this supernaturally born Jesus is just a man or truly incarnate deity? God is omniscient, all-knowing. A great number of my learned listeners tonight know the story of the Samaritan woman found in John 4. Why was she convinced he was what he told her, the Messiah? He said to her, you want this living water? Go bring your husband. She said, I don't have a husband. He looked straight in the eye and said, you spoke the truth. You had five and the one you have now is not your husband. She said, ah!